one of the best way to present data on your WordPress website is by using tables. But the problem is tables are boring and above all, they are not mobile friendly. So in this video, I will show you how you can use the plus add-ons for Elementor and create some amazing looking tables which are not just looking good, but they are also mobile friendly. So if that sounds interesting, then let's dive in. My name is Ankit Sharma from the team Posi Myth. And if you want to learn more about the amazing features of plus add-ons for Elementor, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video. So we will be using the pro table widget from the plus add-ons for Elementor. And here you can create tables like this. So if you have a website where you want to showcase product comparison with some features, so you can use this kind of table. Or if you want to showcase some complex data with some great looking designs, then you can use table templates like this. Along with that, you can also use some complex structures to create some tab structure tables. And if you have an Amazon affiliate website, you can showcase data in this table form and you can also add an add to cart or buy button which will take the visitors to the cart or the affiliate website to make the purchase. And possibilities are endless. You can create some amazing looking tables using the pro table widget from the plus add-ons for Elementor. So here we are in our WordPress backend and if we go in the plugin section, here we have the plus add-ons for Elementor free as well as the pro version installed and activated. So once that is done, we can move on to the plus settings. And here in the plus widgets, we will search for table and this is the widget we are going to use. And as you can see, it's a pro widget. So make sure you have the plus add-ons for Elementor Pro installed and activated. And once we activate this widget, we will click on save. And now let's go ahead and create a fresh page where we can add this table widget. So we will go to pages and then click on add new and let's call it plus tables and let's publish this page. And now we will edit this with Elementor. So here we are in the Elementor editor and let's go ahead and add a new row. And now let's search for the widget table. So this is the table widget which we need to use and we can see it says TP table. So this is the one which is coming from the plus add-ons. So let's drop it here. And as soon as we add the widget here, we have some sample data already added for us. So if we click on this widget, here we have the first option, it says content table. So right now it's selected on custom or the second option is CSV file. So we can upload a CSV file and this will populate the data from that file. And, and we will see all that data from that CSV file in this table. So right now it's using the sample CSV file. So here's the URL for the sample CSV file. You can download this CSV file and then you can edit the data as per your requirement and you can add the URL back here again so that it can populate all the data in the CSV file as a table in this widget. So we will take a look at this later in this video, but right now we will choose custom. So once that is selected, the next option is table header. And this is the first row, which is acting as the table header. So if we click here, here is the sample data, which we see in the first row. So here we see the first item, it says row. So it defines that below this, all the elements are the cells or the columns for this first row or the header of our table. So if we click on the first row item here, we get a new option, it says action. And under that, we have two options, start a new row, or we can mark it as cell content. So right now it is selected for start new row. So every time when we need to add a new row, all we have to do is add a new item and then select the first option to start a new row. So I will show you how it actually works in a few minutes. And here below that, we have an option for tooltips. So if you turn that on, you can easily show a tooltip here and you can add the desired content for the tooltip here in this box. 
And for the tooltip itself, we have few options like icon or maybe just a box. So right now we will not use this option. So let's disable that. And after the row item, we have the first cell and we can see that the content or the text for the cell is ID. So if you want to change this text, we can easily do that from this option. Here we can type in maybe serial number ID. And once again, we also have a tooltip option for this one. Now, if you take a look at the first option, it says action. And here the option selected is cell content. If we choose to create this as a new row, we can change that and this will change the structure of this table. But this is going to mess up our table. So we will bring it back to cell content. And now after adding our text, we have two more options. First one is icon or image. So here we have an option to add icon on the first cell. So maybe we can choose an icon. And for that as well, we have two options, font awesome or icon minds. So we will choose font awesome. And below that we have the list of icon library. We can search for any icon here. So you can choose any icon from the font awesome library here. And once that is done, we have the third option or the third tab, it says advanced. And if we click on that, here we get an option for column span, row span and column width and color of the text and the background color. So here you can define the background color, how you want to change the background color for your cell. And here you can play around with the column width. So I will leave it as it is. And you can also play around with the text of your cell. And similarly, you can add as many cells as you want in your table header. So if in case you want to add a new cell in your table header, all you have to do is just click on this item. And here you can choose cell content. And once again, we just need to fill up all the details in these three tabs. So right now I will delete this cell. And now we move on to the next option that is table body. We again have the same structure. We have the first item as row and below that we have the three cell items and the option of all these cell content items are same. We have the content icon and advanced tab. So now let's see how we can add a new row for this table. So we will move on to the bottom and here we can add a new item. So by default, it is selected as cell content, but we don't want to add a new cell content here. We want to add a new row below this. So we will change this action from cell content to start a new row. So now you see that the table is back in the normal structure. And here this item is marked as the starting point of a new row. So now in order to create a balance table, we need to add three cells below this row item. So we will add a new item here. We will choose the action as cell content. And for the text, we will type in, we will type in sample hash four. And for the next two columns or the next two cells, we are going to just duplicate this content here. So now we have a new row with the three cell items or the three columns. And once again, all of these cell items have similar content, icon and advanced option. So this is how we can add new rows and columns in our table. And if you want to add a complete new column, so you need to add a new cell in the title as well as in the table body. So let's go ahead and try that. We will add a title three. So we come back in the table header. Here we will duplicate this cell title two. So let's duplicate this item and we will name it as title three. So now we have a new cell in the table header. And in order to balance our table, we need to add one cell in each row. So we come down to the table body. And then here we have the first row and the three elements. We will now duplicate the third one in each row so that we can now balance our table. 
So now you see we have a third column in our table header as well as in our table body. And once we are done with the rows and column data, we have the next option. It says extra settings. And here we have an option to make this table searchable. So let's turn that on. And this will add a search option for this specific table, which is a good option for a long data table where people can just type in the information and they will get the desired data from the table itself. And below that, we can change the text for this search here. And after that, we also have the table sortable option. So if we turn that on, we will get an option to sort the data in each column of our table. Below that, we have the entry filter drop down. If we turn that on here, we have an option to limit the number of rows that you want to see in our table. So this is a good option if you want to limit the number of rows visible at the first glance. And below that, we have the mobile responsive option. So here we, we can choose the swipe responsive or one by one responsive option. So let's see how it looks in the mobile. So maybe we can turn off this filter option and the search option as well and let's update this page so this is how it's going to look on the mobile device so as you can see that the design is completely responsive for this table and if we turn that to one by one responsive let's click on update and once again let's see how it looks on the mobile device so this is how the second responsive option looks like. So here we can see that all the table title is now in the column form. And here is the data after that. So you can choose this mobile responsive option as per your design requirement. So once we are done with this, we can move on to the next step that is style. So here we get an option to do all the styling for our table header. So we can change the alignment of the text. We can change the typography. So if you want, you can increase or decrease the font as well as the font family. We also have the option for adding padding here. And after that, we also have the row text colors. So we can define how our complete row text color will look like. So the first one will not change because we have explicitly defined how our cell color will look. So this is not going to affect on this cell. After that, we also have a row background color. So you can change the background color of the complete row. And once again, it will not affect the first cell because we have defined the background color of cell individually. And below that, we have an option for the border. You can turn that on or off as per your, again, design requirement. And below that, we have the same settings or style for the table body. So you can go ahead and play around with all the styling option and see what looks best for your design. After that, we also have icon and image option. So here you can define how your icons will look like. So if you want to add a custom color for your icons, you can do that from here. And you can also play around with the icon size and the icon position and the icon spacing. And same goes if you choose image instead of an icon. And after that, we have the similar styling option for search bar, the tooltip option. And at the end, we have the table styling option. So we can add a margin to our table. So this will add a margin all around our table inside that complete section. So let's remove this one. And you can also add a complete background to your table. So this will be visible if you add a little bit of margin or padding at your complete table structure. After that, we have a display border option. So we can add a border to the complete table itself. And we also have a box shadow option and we also have an option for overflow. So this is going to hide anything if it is going beyond the view of the device. So you can play around with this option depending upon how it looks in the front end of your design. So right now I'm going to turn this off. Below that we have an on scroll animation. So we have an option if you want to add any animation for the loading of this table. So you can play around with all these options available. 
and after that we have the normal advanced tab where we have the advanced settings that are native in the elementor widgets so now we can create as many rows as we want and fill up all the cell data with the desired information now i'm sure you must be wondering that i am not a designer and how can i create these cool looking tables on my wordpress website so we got you covered here as well if you like any of the design here on this page all you have to do is just go to that table design and you will find this copy button here let's click on this and this is going to copy this complete structure from our website and let's come back in our page editor and here let's go ahead and add a new row and if we right click we see the last option it says plus paste let's click on that and boom here we have the table imported right in your elementor editor so you can do the same for any table that you see on this page all you have to do is just click on this copy button and you can add that design directly in your elementor editor page and now all you have to do is just click on this table and then you can go ahead and edit all the data available here let's say if i want to clear this first cell i want to this to be a blank section so here in the first cell i will just go ahead and remove this text and then just click on update so now we have the first column as empty and then you can move on to the table body and do all the editing in all of these table cells so depending upon your website requirement or your website design you can choose any of these tables and import them right in your wordpress website now once that is done let's go ahead and see how we can import the data in our tables from a csv file so here again we will add a new row and now let's search for table widget So here we have the sample data loading here and instead of custom we will choose csv file this time and once again we have the sample data here so this is the csv file here is the url so we will copy this url and then save this csv file so let's open this file so here is the format where we need to enter our data so let's change the first row and see how it looks so instead of one we will add as zero let's let's save this file and now we need to give the url for this csv file here so you can use your ftp server for uploading the csv file and this will fetch the data here so let's go ahead and do that so we have uploaded the csv file on the ftp server and here we see the first entry that we have edited so we are going to copy the url and as soon as we paste it here we see that the data is now updated so here we see that our first row is edited as we have done in the csv file so this is how you can use a csv file to create tables and then show that csv data in your table widget so if you don't want to add data in each cell or if you already have a csv file with the data filled up you can import all that using a csv file right in the table widget so this is how easy it is to use the plus add-ons for elementor to create tables which are not just good looking but mobile friendly as well so no matter if you have a blog you have a wordpress business website a woocommerce product page or maybe a b2b website where you have to showcase various details about your products or maybe any other data your table will no longer look boring so if you like this video then make sure you hit the like button and to learn more about such amazing features of the plus add-ons for elementor make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video so that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video